Okay. So now let's make sure that we understand how this works in terms of Kruskal. So Kruskal involves the notion of an oracle in which you are management. So what do you do to implement Kruskal? You start with an empty graph. There are no edges selected. You take the cheapest edge of all. Find it. Here it is. Now, I want to select the component. So the component that I will select is this one. Now I'll back up. Now I'll choose the edge. So if this is the component, I'll look at this edge, this edge, this edge, that edge, this edge, that edge, this edge. And I'll look at all the edges with one endpoint in this component and one not. But of all those edges, I'll also look at this one. And that's the one I will take. So take that edge. Now, what does Kruskal do next? It picks the next cheapest edge, which doesn't form a cycle. So it might be this edge over here. Now, I want to force the constraint optimization to choose this. So I've got in mind this is the target. So now I'll say, OK, use this component at step two. So now. The algorithm looks at this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, that edge. It looks at all the edges with one endpoint there and one endpoint there. And it also looks at the edge which I had in mind. And it takes this one as the cheapest edge. So you see how it's foresight? It's like, tell me in advance what I was going to do. Tell me which edge I was going to choose. Then I'll choose the component. Then I'll back up and choose the edge. In computer science, you call that an oracle. An oracle knows what I'm going to do and tells me information in advance. So I just need an oracle. Tell me what I'm going to do next. The oracle says, you are going to take that edge. Then I say, fine. That's the component. Then I apply my algorithm. And I look at all the edges that look like this, 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 this. And I take the one the oracle told me I was going to take. Because it's the cheapest edge with one endpoint in C and one endpoint not at C. That's why Kruskal works. Kruskal is that lemma with an oracle telling you which component to use. OK, now let's do. Prim. The idea for prim is that the oracle is going to go out for coffee. Management is going to go out for coffee. They're just going to leave you with a standing set of instructions. So Now, we start, as before, with the empty forest. But with one of the vertices specified as a root, say, somewhere vertex 1. It doesn't matter what, again, uh, the selection of vertex 1 is just a notational convenience. So management says, I really need a coffee. I'm going to start with that as your component. And thereafter, just take the component that you're building. That's C. Bye. See you in an hour. So what do you do? What does the algorithm do? The algorithm says you look at all the edges with one endpoint in C and one endpoint not in C. So it looks at this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge. And it takes the cheapest one, maybe that. 
Now, what was management's instruction? The C just expands, and that's C. What do you do in step two? You look at all the edges with one endpoint in C, one not. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. All of a sudden, and you choose the cheapest one. Maybe it looks like this. Now, your C expands, and it's this. And you just keep going. Because the C just keeps expanding. Build tree. That's print. It's just the constrained choice where the component always consists of what you have done up to this step. So both Kruskal and Prim are provably optimal algorithms. By exploiting connections with a family of discrete structures called matroids, and the notion of an exchange principle which embodies principles from linear algebra, but over a finite field whose only elements are 0 and 1. And as I mentioned previously, there are many other spanning tree algorithms. But ultimately, they all point back to that lemma for their proofs. Are there any questions about spanning trees? Let me again suggest, do take a look at the test archive and look at the range of questions that I have asked about spanning trees over the years. You can expect to be asked questions which are quite similar. On some tests, I've just drawn a picture about the size of the examples we've used here. And I've said, in the space below, list the edges in order. The order is important list the edges in order that Kruskal and Prim would imply are in your minimum weight spanning tree. And then I give you space. So, and I say, Kruskal, avoid cycles. And you list the edges in the order. Then next to it, you list the edges in the order that Prim's algorithm will, will take. Often it's the case that you wind up selecting the same set of edges, but the order will be fundamentally different. When I want to mess with you a little bit, which is not very often, I won't draw the picture. I'll just give you the data. So I'll just give you, and usually if I'm being nice, I'll just I'll get, at least give you the data in sorted form. So implementing Kruskal is easy, but I won't draw the picture. You should be comfortable working with data or working with pictures, either way. 